We are live. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Live Lunch. We are joined today by the wonderful Sophie Cox. Hello. Who is in her last month of being an intern at Emmanuel and then she leaves Brighton to go to Cambridge University. Sophie, so thank you so much for all that you've done with us here at Emmanuel. Uh, it's great to have you with us again. With, and Matt and me, you know, as usual, Matt is in the preacher seat because Joel has chosen not to be here. Ouch. Well, if What's you're watching you this, He's message Joel person. and say you need to get back on live lunch. All five of you. He gets those five messages. He might be moved. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Matt's looking at me really awkward. Good to be here, yo. Good, Good to be to here. Have yeah. you back, back. You always do that, man. Um, Matt, back why don't week. you give us a summary of the preach? Can do. Are we going to talk about the food? We're we going to talk about what we're talking about in today's yes. live lunch. No. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we've got food Sorry. from Social Board. They're quite l lovely, meaty sandwiches. These but are great they're all sandwiches. Disintegrated as we've tried to eat they're them. They're really hard to eat. They are really hard but to eat, but they're they good. Taste I'm delicious. Not and they gave us a magnet. Wait. Yeah. It's a fridge magnet with their little QR code That's on clever. it. That's so so, clever. So clever. I found yeah. them in a fridge. Nice. So clever. Um, so this week we are going to be going through. So Matt's going to summarize the preach, and then we're going to really talk about the personification of evil. Wow. And the devil and how he accuses us how he he speaks lies to us we're gonna have a hopefully have an interesting conversation around uh mental health and accusation and then how, a whole other bunch of questions around how we can practically overcome the accusations of the enemy which we hope you will find helpful so you know when i listen to podcast summaries i realize you know when they start the podcast where they talk about what they're going to talk yeah. about in the podcast yeah it's usually done after they've recorded the episode We've said all of these things, and knowing us, we'll just go off on a tangent. Wow. That's Interesting. All right. That's all right. You set expectations and then disappoint them. And That's then okay. break We can live with that. <laughs> We've had um, a big week in this country we will have a new prime minister soon yeah that's true Boris that is, is gone true. no connection with Satan and accusation wow and yeah all we're just things. all over the map this <laughs> sorry <today>. sorry um, <laughs> we had See, if we weren't live we could edit these bits out we, had, <laughs> <laughs> we had a very interesting conversation about the imagery used for so we've called the the, the preachers called our real home our real oh, yeah, enemy yeah, 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 yeah that is Quite coincidentally, Lucy Felly, who is our wonderful communications team, boop, boop. in turn um, cho and chooses the images for the the preaching the slide. slide right. Yeah, um, chose an image of seagulls. Yeah, and so we've had this conversation how seagulls are a real enemy here in Brighton. For those in who that. call Brighton yeah. their home, absolutely, yeah. uh, seagulls are the real enemy. And we've clocked that, that Matt's clever. had that food clever. stolen from him multiple oh, yeah. times. Mul well, li you live in this city long enough. Well, I've, I've lived well, here for a significant amount of time, and I haven't had food stolen. You obviously from don't me. eat outside enough. I, yeah, well, sure. But yeah, once <laughs> when I was a student on campus, seagull came over. I was eating my sandwich, none the wiser, and boom! I actually took a chunk out my finger. Ouch. And then you go into conversation about the kind of disease that you can get. I know, uh, I know. Uh, it sounds being like. Being bit by a seagull. Yeah. We've got Ella Feli in the room as well. And she did some research on some of the diseases that you could <laughs> catch from. I'm, I'm lucky to yeah. be here. I'm Basically, be here. Matt's so, a miracle. So like in, in, in the future when we have, hey, the seagull man. It's like, oh, Matt's the, the, seagull, the, the man. seagull man. <laughs> the seagull man. Sorry, sorry, we digress. People will start telling me off for all these same yeah. conversations we have at the start of live lunch. Anyway. Matt, let's go. Let's go. All right. This week, we are looking at the passage where Jacob has, well, he actually finally leaves Laban and he's, he's heading back to his homeland and um, Laban pursues him, doesn't want to um, give him up easily and chases after him. And then they have this sort of uh, discussion and um, Laban tries to, well, the, God speaks to Laban and makes sure that uh, Laban doesn't do anything to speak against him, although Laban kind of goes in and does that anyway. But uh, Jacob is getting free, and it's a message about, um, I guess Joel was talking about how this is quite a big theme right the way through the Bible, liberation and finding a place of home, getting set free and pursuing a home is exactly what Jacob is, is doing there and there's different that theme comes up again and again we'll, we'll see it in the next book of the Bible which is Exodus and the massive um, uh, idea in the whole Bible there um, about Exodus about freedom and find it, finding a, a place to settle a home and also um, Laban um, in, in that we talked about an enemy 
and uh, Laban sort of accusing and, and suggesting things against uh, against Jacob. And so that idea of like, what does that look like for us in the Christian life? We have an accuser. Joel was talking about how uh, the devil is one who accuses us, who speaks lies to us, and we even sometimes reminds us of the truth in a in a uh, in a condemning way. And so the, the Christian walk is to um, stand in the truth uh, in in spite of that. So just to kick us off, we've we've talked about Satan being called the accuser and Satan's you know accusing us and and speaking oppressive negative words to us, manipulating the truth. But if people are looking in, and I'm slightly cynical, being like, hold on a second, there's there's um, you know we've science has progressed to an extent where we've un- we've have a more of an understanding on mental health issues and anxiety and cognitive reasoning and, and all of this. You know, does it sound a bit silly to say, oh, well, that's it's the devil who speaks. How do you can you hold the two intention? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's it's a it's a reality. It's a reality. Obviously, obviously, when someone becomes a Christian, you uh, realize that, that there's there is spirituality is is real and 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 God is real and the, and the the way we understand who God is is through the Bible and the Bible is very clear that there is an enemy and when we become a christian when we um god brings us onto his side we are his enemy becomes our enemy um and so that is um that that is that is reality and so uh, and that plays that plays out in in our life and um the bible right the way through talks about that in the new testament as well about um not believing lies and i think there's not a huge amount of bits in the bible uh, that actually specifically talk about the devil but he sort of comes in at key moments you sort of you see him right at the beginning and it helps to explain how people have fallen out of relationship with god like the devil's instrumental in that in in um bringing twisting god's word did god really say causing them to sin against god and then it crops up at different points as well and we have a similar thing um uh, in the life of Jesus at the beginning of his ministry the, the devil comes in and does the same thing says alright oh, feed, feeds lies you know, bow down to me you'll have all this you don't need to don't need to follow the father's plan that sort of thing and so his his uh, is that a real fire alarm or a fake fire alarm <laughs> there is a fire alarm that's just got no I guess we'll never know <laughs> uh, interesting <laughs> I dropped my water bottle so I'm gonna get that and it stopped Hmm. And somebody let us know if there is a fire in the building and we need to evacuate. Thanks. Thank, thank you. I think it could be Joel testing it, so I think we might be okay. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Well, he does that sometimes, so... Okay. Yay, I this whole interaction is being caught on camera. Uh, just, Yay! Just, no, just cut it, just cut it, just cut it. Okay. Cut. We're back. If you're wondering where we've been, we had a fire alarm and... We are now back. We all follow the We're process. All, we all follow the Perfect process. Plan. We're all safe. Yeah. It was a false alarm. Anyway, questions. So first question, um, why do you think Satan is called the accuser and not the tempter? Sophie, you had something yes. to say. Hello, I did have something to share on that. Yeah, so um, I was thinking about what Joel was saying in the preach and I was thinking about how he was talking about um, Satan bringing us lies and bringing us truth but stated in a manipulative way so not technically a lie but also kind of a lie um yeah and i was just thinking that actually we don't really need to he doesn't really need to tempt us because when he accuses us we fall back into into sin so for example if uh if satan says you know are you really worthy of being like saved by by christ on the cross um, you start to question that and you think, oh, do I need to do I need to earn my salvation? Do I need to serve more in church? Do I need to pray more? Do I need to read my Bible more in order to like get that that grace from God? Um, and actually, that's that's not what you know, that's not what the Bible says. It doesn't say that we need to earn mm. our salvation. Right. But um, then we start falling back into, yeah, into patterns of sin, like trying to trying to do um life on our own and not trusting in god to actually provide for us um and give us you know all of his great goodness that he's that he's promised us so yeah i was thinking really that's the reason that he's called the accuser rather than the tempter because actually he doesn't necessarily need to tempt us every time it's 
more of a an accusation that he gives us and then then the the lies themselves kind of take us back away from god mm. yeah. i think it speaks to as well the the power or lack of power that the that the enemy has mm. um, um because uh that's that actually um satan doesn't act, for a christian satan doesn't have any power over over you can't make you do stuff but i think through the lies and through words and through the accusations it feels like if if we follow that if we yield to that like sophie's explaining that you know causes us to or you know we do things in response to that um but it's it's yeah it's based on whether we believe that or not um i moving on to, i guess the next the question that i have is you kind of hear so we've 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 talked about Satan being an accuser, and and I guess he he does that by by manipulating of of the truth, by uh, by accusing, by kind of just negative, oppressive thoughts that you can have, which make you question your salvation, question your walk with God, take you away from your love for Jesus. Um, what would you say to people who who, would, who are skeptical people who say, "Well, hold on a second, you know, why are you personifying this as, as satanic or as as in as the ev- as evil?" When um, we've had study that's developed enough to understand that people struggle with mental health issues and an anxiety and oppressive thoughts, you know, we've understood science, science has taken us progressively forward in this direction. Yeah. Is this some backward thinking about these things? Or what would you say to them? Yeah, I think you can. Um it once says fall off the horse from from either side on on, on this issue i think there's probably i would say there's probably even christians you know who 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 have undervalued or underplayed the spiritual aspect of even the gospels and you, you you see you see the life of jesus and you see him speaking to different people different people afflicted and it, it regularly talks about people who are like demon possessed or had a demon or that sort of thing and Jesus casting them out and that sort of thing even within sort of Christian understanding or the church sometimes there is people saying well actually it wasn't uh, a demonic thing it was a mental health issue and that's why um, and the Bible is using that language but it doesn't really mean that um, I think firstly to, to that you so that would you know and in, in one sense that is like trying to use some of the the maybe leaning on the scientific understanding and, and porting that into the bible i think we've got to be careful with that because the bible doesn't say that <laughs> and we are very much in danger there of just contradicting and thinking we know better uh, than what what the bible says and so i we we, mu- we mustn't do that um but that's not you know on the other extreme that's not to say well you know um, any advances in <laughs> in cognitive science and everything, understanding of how people work and that sort of thing. We don't want to dismiss that either because that's helpful. Any Anything that helps us to understand how people uh, work and how people function, that sort of thing, is going to help us. And I think it helps us pastorally as well. And so this, this does definitely uh, come up in a, a, a pastoral context when people... Uh, when you're trying to sit with someone and work out what they're going through and they're Christian and, and trying to work out what it looks like for them to, f- to follow Jesus. And they want to follow Jesus, um, but there's stuff that's going on in their head. And like, what part of that, if they're feeling anxious, if they're feeling they've got oppressive thoughts, if they're feeling they've got, um, you know, certain ways of thinking that are patterns of thinking that are destructive and, you know, it's really tricky. It's like really tricky. Like try even for them and for you as a pastor working out. Okay, which part of this might be some demonic activity in terms of not we're not talking a Christian being possessed by a demon, but we're talk- the reality. The Bible helps us to understand that actually the enemy is real. That he accuses and that can have an impact on us. So working out what is uh, lies of the enemy, mental health issue. Um, and also understanding that our mental health and our physical health and, and spirituality, like we're all one, us all together. And sometimes like different, well, we'll talk about different little bits, but I think the Bible encourages us to think of ourselves as whole people and not see the little sections within us. So I've got a spiritual six, section over here, the physical and a mental and emotional, that sort of thing. Um, you can divide it up and if it helps you think about it, if you want, 
But I, th- I think what we all experience in our lives, and I think I do pastorally, is, <laughs> is so often those things overlap and they all contribute and all affect one each other. Um, so I think the the, the role of um, a pastor and how and how we help people is is to an extent trying to talk that out and and work out whether what what's actually going on and trying to discern whether there's like prayer that needs to happen specifically for uh, you know um on on getting out lies mm. that have come in or prayer for healing in cer- mm. certain areas anxiety or mental health issues that sort of thing like so i guess to, to to learn this practically if somebody is is listening to this and is like oh i don't quite know what's going on in my mind what would you say to them well I th- yeah i think if you're trying to um i i think i think what <laughs> what's important to do is uh, to to seek the pa- pastoral help, you know, and we we all we all need that. We you're not going to sit there in your room and work it out yeah. on your own, um, and uh, or you, you're not going to sit there and you know look at a YouTube video and and work it out yourself either. Which might be that you're watching this on YouTube, but <laughs> the temptation of this that we we work things out in community. We mm. all have areas of weakness in our life. We all have areas pr- things that we're prone to think that are not help helpful mm. and that sort of thing. We're all probably well, a very high percentage of us are going to have different uh, periods in our life of poor mental health. That's mm. a, that's a reality. We just need to be real about that and understand that we go through that with others and actually mm. being a part of a community, a part of a small group have people in your lives that actually talk about the real mm. things of life is vitally important for that it's brilliant I think so often we do talk about community and, and small group and that is it, because it's really important you know we aren't meant to live our lives out by ourselves yeah, you know, yeah. very much meant to live our lives out in community and I think I think as well with this with this topic of mm. believing yeah. believing lies and Satan being the accuser sometimes it's other people that can help us yeah. with that the most <laughs> like sometimes the only in conversation you you might say something and someone else say but that's not true why do you say that about the situation or why do you say that about yourself because that's not true that's not who you are in christ and sometimes i can be like oh, oh yeah i've just held on to that and you sometimes there's lies that we hold on to for so long we don't see them as lies we don't remember that they are lies we just think that's part of our life mm-hmm. oh i'm like this or this has happened to me therefore i can't do that or that sort of thing Brilliant. you know so we i'm gonna ramble here but we're coming to the end of um thrive's story we've mentioned it a few times that's a small group uh, that we have here at Emmanuel and we're coming to the end of it this week and I'm, it was fresh in my mind because I'm prepping the message for tomorrow um, but it's all about the fact that you know the stuff that you need to leave behind in order to walk into the purposes of God and sometimes these lies that, that hold through through the process of doing Thrive So well, hopefully it's been rooting out some lies that are in people's lives so mm. that they can move forward uh, which is anyway Brilliant uh, I guess um, we we're <laughs> rapidly running out of time thanks to this uh, fire interruption uh, fire alarm interruption um there is the accusation of the devil but there's also conviction of the holy spirit and sometimes it could be quite a fine line yeah or how would you draw the, like the 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 diff the, what's the, the how, what would allow you how to help you draw it? differences between hey this is accusation and the, but this is conviction from the holy spirit yeah Go for it, yeah so um when we were chatting earlier just before this I think Matt summed it up pretty well, so I'm going to steal his words. Oh, go ahead. Um, so I was, I was saying, you know, the um, conviction of the Holy Spirit is something that builds you up, and mm. kind of on that, Matt said um, that lies from the devil are something that um, will take you away from God, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit is something that will, will push you or pull you towards God, um, towards the purposes that He has for your life and kind of the person that He wants you to be. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's kind of your main difference. But in terms of recognizing it, I think, again, we're just going back to this whole community thing. Mm. Um, I think it is really helpful to talk to someone about the things that are going on in your life because sometimes you you get that like conviction, but you kind of think, oh, well, it's, it's a lie from the devil because you don't really mm. want to accept that. Mm. And then the other thing is you can take in this lie from the devil and think, oh it's the holy spirit saying i need to do better but actually it's it's not um so being with people who are walking in the same journey as you maybe a little bit further on in their faith than you are they can just help you see the difference between those two things so i think talking Mm. as well is a handy thing to do Mm, brilliant 
Uh, last question before we draw this to a close. Um, I think just to help people who are probably feeling like oh, I'm stuck in just this accusations of the devil. You had a, a story that you're sharing as you won't name your friend. Yeah, I have, uh, a friend. Tell us if, yeah. I have some friends, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've got a friend and she was just talking to me about um, something that was going on with her. She had a, a lie, a particular lie that kind of was feeding into her um, day after day, just like impacting the way she thought about her work and the way she thought about um, like her personal life, her relationships with people. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of this lie that was constantly like over her head. Um, and it, it definitely wasn't something that's like true. Um, it wasn't something that could maybe have come from the Bible or one of these like truths that the devil's come and manipulated. It's just like a straight, like that's not true. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually when she was talking about it, she, um, we kind of helped her to, to see that it wasn't true. Um, and the way that she worked through that was just going back into the Bible and looking at actually what, what does God say over me um, that's specifically contrary to this lie that she had? Um, mm. What is it that God says over my life? Who does God say I am? Mm. Um, what does God say the purpose is for me? Um, yeah, so I think that's that's another just helpful thing that, yeah, just really turned it around for her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think going back into scripture, because ultimately those are the words of God and they're the things that, you know, that's what that's what's God left for us. He left us the Bible mm. and he left us the Holy Spirit. Mm. And these are the two things that we are to take and live our lives mm. off of, essentially. Yeah. So for her to go back into that and kind of refuel yeah, brilliant um, super yeah. quickly I think um, I think that's really really important because we we like to think that we are, live in a sort of blank slate and like um, we're just kind of neutral and like oh a lie comes along oh I don't want to believe that or something else going, oh I believe that but actually we, we you can't displace a lie unless you have a truth that's going to dis- displace that mm. and when it whether it's so you're always going to think something about yourself you're going to think something about your situation you, you, we're meaning makers we, we have to interpret everything that happens and we have a narrative in our head and it's the question is what's what's informing that narrative is it the truth is it the truth of scripture is it the truth of who we are who God is who we are in him etc otherwise it will be something else like you know we, we, we talk about this you know in terms of I know it sounds it's, it's like really s- spiritual to talk about the lies of the enemy and that sort of thing but you can you can strip all that language away and actually anyone anyone whether they would say they're religious or not they have certain beliefs things they believe about themselves about the world about the way things should be about the relationship with other people and there's a narrative that's going on in your head and they might not use any religious language about it but in there there'll be a mixture of things that are true kind of true not true and uh, but we 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 hold them we have them um, and so the, the way that the, one of the ways that gospel helps us is to just just to inform that narrative to just bring clarity and bring truth in a way that's uplifting and just helps us in life um, yeah so there you go. brilliant well we've run out of time um, thank you so much for watching especially if it was interrupted um, Matt we've got Three more weeks after the Promised Indios? Correct. Uh, yeah, what, we have. Uh, do we have to look forward to this week? Yeah, well, we've got the return of Esau hmm. uh, oh, this, this coming. Joel speaking again, and uh, we've not seen Esau for a long time. And uh, we have the... Um, Jacob is, is uh, as we've said, he's making his way home. But then what, what that means is he's going to come face to face with Esau. And so it's about him being afraid uh, of Esau and that sort of thing. So that's what we're looking at. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again, Sophie, for joining us. And we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.